Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And thanks for joining us for Tesla Time News, episode 27. Coming to you from Savannah, Georgia. All right, so our first big story here is something that Elon promised this week. What did he promise? He promised 100 megawatt hours in 100 days or it's free. What? In Australia, they've been having um, really bad power outages. Oh, and blackouts right. Because their demand their demand is su- has such fluctuations, mm-hmm. they don't have enough peak power. Right. Um, and so, you could either build more peaker plants. Okay, and those are uh, like gas-fired plants that go online just for short periods of the day to, to meet that demand. During the peak. Or, what else you could you build battery storage. Oh, like they did in Southern California. Right. So um, this system is probably going to look a lot like the Edison system. At uh, Point uh, Miraloma in, in Southern California. Yeah. Um, and But the, I think the thing that caught everyone's attention, on Twitter, Elon was having a conversation with Mike Cannon Brooks. He's the, what, the co-founder of Atlas- Atlassian, which is um, trying to raise money and political awareness to get the uh, solution to this. Right. So he says, you know, if I can if I can make the the money in politics happen, can you guarantee 100 megawatt hours in 100 days? And Elon tweeted him back. He says, "Tesla will get the system installed and working in 100 days from contract signature or it's free." Is that serious enough for you? Wow. So, and that was on March 9th. Right. So, I mean, wow. 100 megawatt hours in 100 days or it's free. Now, that's a lot of batteries. And those are the batteries being made at the Gigafactory in, in Nevada right now. Right. It means one of three things. Okay, what does it mean? It means that either Elon is super confident in just being able to, to get the batteries out. Okay. Or it means that they had already sort of planned this out and said, you know, oh, this got... is something that we could do. Okay. And they've got like the batteries kind of almost made or something, like sitting in the storage at the factory. Right. Or it's something that they sort of crunched the numbers really quick on. And said, and someone yeah, said, Elon, like don't do promise it. them that we can do it. And he right. said, I'm going to promise it. Right. So, I mean, I, I think that they probably have the batteries pretty much ready to go because, I mean, they're going to need to ship them to Australia. Yeah, I mean, I think most of the time involved here is just getting everything to Australia from Nevada. I mean, that right. takes a lot of, of, of logistics to do. Right. Now, I think what's great about this story is even if it turns out to be free, even if Tesla has to foot the bill for free, This is great publicity for Tesla because if they can solve this problem again, like they did in Southern California, if they can solve it for Australia, many other municipalities and countries are going to turn to Tesla to solve their peaker problems because let's understand how the grid works. You, when you flick on a light switch, it's not like then they go, oh, Zach needs power, let's turn on a a plant. They had to already predict that and turn that plant on and it has to be ready for you. So that means that most grids are running 40% more power than right. is needed at any given point. That's true. And that takes a lot of extra power plants. If you have battery storage, you have instant accessibility to that electricity. Right. And it's a great solution for almost any place. Right. You don't need that many power plants. Um, and it allows you to um, use sustainable sources that aren't necessarily always on, like solar. Oh, sometimes it's nighttime. Um, so it allows you to, to have that sort of battery backup which is super helpful. All of these blackouts in Australia have also caused um, the, the demand for Tesla Powerwall um, to increase 30 times. Yeah, 1.6 million homes in Australia have solar power, and if they add battery backup as well, right. that can really help the grid. Right, it not only helps uh, those people, because now they have, they battery, have battery they have personal battery backup for their home, um, but it also, helps the grid because it, it sort of even levels out. it out and it helps them because they get a return on their investment of about eight to fifteen percent a year just with the battery just pack. with the battery pack. because uh, of the the pay structure you know you right. pay more during peak hours right and so if you're able to save charge um, during non-peak hours and and use during peak hours of your battery you can save um, 15 to 18 percent of invest return on investment for a backup system. Right. So this next story is pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. The CEO of VW had something quite interesting to say at the Geneva Auto Show this week. Yeah. Uh, shall I read the quote? Sure. All right. We were quite far advanced with the next Phaeton, but it became clear that it wasn't enough of a leap forward. A modern large saloon has to be competitive, 
and have an advantage over Tesla, which is the benchmark, and in many regions dominates the segment. Now if we go back there, we have to take Tesla seriously, and of course, that is what we are doing with our electric strategy. So what's a saloon? It's a British word for sedan. Oh, didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Okay. So what um, DICE is basically saying out loud, even yes. though we kind of knew this was true, is that they had to completely change directions when the Model S came around because they could not compete going forward with just, oh, let's do another slight dip addition of the Golf and let's do another, you know, i3 upgrade. Right. They needed to basically try and compete head on with Tesla Model S. Now, the car that we're showing here, um, I don't recognize that car. Why is that? That's because they knew that it wouldn't sell well in the United States. But what is this car, the Phaeton? Like, is that, that's available in Europe, right? Yes, you can get this car in Europe, um, but they thought that it just wouldn't sell well in the United States. Um, but in the US, they pushed for the Audi um, A8. Oh, so because Audi is one of VW's brands, they chose that as being the competition to... They think that's the sedan that's going to capture the market. The luxury sedan. Um, I just want to point out that Tesla Model S has been the top-selling large, lu luxury. large luxury sedan um, yeah. for like a year, at least. Oh, yeah, more. Obviously, it has to have um, these guys scrambling. Because yeah, and they just admitted it out loud. Right. So, and, I mean, that's big news. And what's also big news is that by the time they actually come up with something to compete with it, we're talking 2019, 2020. Right. What their Tesla killer will be is um, the Porsche uh, Mission E, right. which sounds great, looks cool. It looks like a Porsche. Um, and again, Porsche is another VW company. Right. But it will be more expensive and it'll have the same range basically all the same stuff as, as a Model S. They say it might have 800 volt charging capability, which would be faster charging than the Tesla currently has. Right. Um, you know, that would be a 15 minute charge time, which would to be full, would be to full, which would be amazing, but they'd have to put in that network. That's true. If, I mean, if you can charge the car to eight, with 800 volts, you need to supply it with 800 volts. And right now there are no superchargers that I know of, of any kind. Um, That'll charge that at that voltage. Right. So moving on, Mazda is clueless. Oh, as if. Yeah. Um, they said that they feel no pressure from customers to make electric vehicles. Wow. I mean, I don't know who their customers are and why they're not giving them any pressure, but that's a bad move. That's a really bad that's, move. It's going to set them back years. It's going to set them back decades. I mean, it's bad enough that other car manufacturers are trying to do this, but too slowly. It's another thing if you just decide not to do it at all. They're, yeah, if you're there's going to bury your head in the sand and just say... Oh, we'll just keep selling, you know, fuel efficient cars. Right. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons I think they think they can do this is that the uh, EPA has rated them, I think, for the past three years, the most fuel efficient car. Now, I'm a little upset about that because, um, as you pointed out, Tesla is, is the, mo the most, most efficient. Fuel. And and if you wanted to maybe yeah. argue that the Leaf is a little bit more fuel efficient, you might make that argument. But to say that Mazda, yeah. as the whole brand, though, right? Tesla is the only car manufacturer that sells production cars right now that is completely, um, that is completely zero emit tailpipe right. emissions right so for epa to ignore that is seems absurd just ridiculous yeah um, so clueless mazda so mm -hmm. nissan has revealed that it's going to reveal a reveal that will happen in september what i think this story is just we barely didn't even want to report on it because it's just a bunch of talk about talk about talk yeah but basically we all know that a new leaf is coming um, Nissan finally has announced some things about it, things we already knew basically, that right. it's going to have 200 plus miles of range, Right. that it's going to look something like this, but not really, because this is just a concept It's just a concept, so it'll probably end up looking a lot like what the Leaf does now. Right, I mean, so they're showing this one, which is cool, it has, you know, the, the, the doors with the no B-pillar there, which is a lot like an i3, but that's a concept car, I want, you, I want to stress that, like, that might be what it looks like, but we don't know, because they haven't actually shown us anything more than some concepts right um i think that this is great when it'll finally come out if it finally comes out um a 200 plus leaf 
Yeah. If they can keep it within the same price range, that's awesome. That puts us with huge. the Model Three. That puts us with the Bolt. So I mean, that's great. And they have a proven track record of putting out cars like you know the Leaf that work. So right. uh, we are excited about it. I think what we're just trying to say is that Nissan is kind of they've taken two years to update the Leaf, and they haven't even given us anything yet. And they're just kind of like giving right. us little. They, they've said that they've had the technology to have a two hundred mile plus Leaf for two years right. and they haven't given it to us. Right. I mean, that's, it sounds to me like maybe they didn't have the technology. Right. Uh, but just it's just like- Stretching for time. Right, it's like, what, uh, what are you waiting for? <laughs> right. Like, that would sell super well. Yeah. That would be on par with the, the Model 3 in terms of price for, for range, which right. I think is what a lot of people care about it is the range. Right. Um, so, I mean, it sounds like we're not going to actually see the car until about September and you won't be able to get your hands on it till much later in the year. So, did you hear about this story, Jess? An American car company making electric cars in America. Detroit Electric. Oh, I mean, I have heard about that. Doesn't that so sound great? It does. They're trying to follow in Tesla's footsteps. So smart. Copy the best. True, but they're like... Eight years behind? Well, you got to start somewhere, right? I mean, they're making it right here in America. No, actually. No? They're making them in the cars in the UK. Uh, but they're headquartered right here in Detroit, right? They have offices in Detroit, uh -huh. but their headquarters is in the Netherlands. And they're being funded by China's Far East Smarter Energy Group. So it's a Chinese... It's basically turning into a Chinese company. Right. So the headquarters is in the Netherlands being funded by China, and it's being made in the UK. Okay, so wait, let me get this straight. So are they making like a Tesla 3 killer? Uh, no, they're making a, basically like a Tesla Roadster again. They're that, actually, they're taking a Lotus. Uh -huh. Wait, that's what Roadster did. Right. They're taking uh, the updated Lotus, uh -huh. um, and they're converting them into electric cars. Okay. I don't follow anymore. Right. Um, also, the cars don't have... They, aren't they must be fast, though. I mean, they must be just blazingly just beat the Model S like 0 to 60 times, right? No. They, uh, so it'll go 0 to 60 in 3.9. Wait. The Tesla can do it in, like, what are we down to? 2, I think. Right. Um, and the... Range uh, must be phenomenal for such a little car, though. I mean, you must be able to go hundreds of miles in that thing. No, uh... You're gonna get 140 miles of EPA to range. What? Uh, yep. And which is worse than the uh, original Tesla Roadster, which had 220 miles of range. Okay, but it must be that this car is so cheap that people will be willing to overlook that because it's so cheap. Uh, no, it's gonna cost over a hundred thousand dollars. How? What? Uh, I don't know how they think that they're going. So to the only part of the story now that makes sense is that they're keeping Detroit in the name because they're so clueless. Like the rest of these Detroit companies. Yeah, I don't quite get it. I mean, yes, follow Tesla's lead. But not... But not like... Yeah, I guess so. I mean, good luck to them, I guess. But it just seems like they're going about it the wrong way. It totally does now. All right, so every week we report to you the superchargers that are going online around the world. And this week is no different. Tesla's been pretty busy. Let's see what we got here. So um, I'll take the first one. In... Mercato San Seravino, Italy. They opened a new supercharger. Wow, that's great. Um, also in Las Vegas Boulevard, uh, Nevada. Ooh. In Air de Saint-Priest, France. And another one was opened in Waterloo, New York. And two are under construction. One at Woodall, UK. And the other one at Odekak, Croatia. Wow, that's a lot of new superchargers. That's a lot of new superchargers and, and two being built. Pretty exciting. I, I think the one in Croatia probably really need it. Yeah. We also had a um, viewer who sent in this review of a supercharger. Hey, now you know nation. I'm here at the Tesla 8-bay supercharger outside Erie, Pennsylvania, just off of I-90 and I-79 coming north out of Pittsburgh. This is the only supercharger that is located between Buffalo, New York, and Cleveland, Ohio. So if you're making that route, you're going to have to stop here most likely. Right now it's being iced by a Lexus, so thank you for that, whoever owns it. But it's on the uh, parking lot of a Hilton Garden Inn, walking distance to a Cracker Barrel, a Courtyard Marriott, and an Aldi's uh, grocery store, as well as an Applebee's for a restaurant. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up, what's Aaron Erie?
Peace. Hey, Zach and Jesse, what's going on? This is Arthur in Vegas. Uh, we just got, we just opened a new, what I call Mega Supercharger, because they have 10 stalls. Uh, it's just south of the Strip. There's the Las Vegas Strip right there. And it's in a place called Town Square. And that is an outdoor outlet mall. So there's plenty of shops and restaurants and there's a few 24-hour places in there. All right, so every week we like to bring in comments that we think were pretty cool from our commenters. And last week we had talked about the possible solar roof that Panasonic is, is making and it might be the solar roof for the Model 3. We got two cool comments this week pointing out some advantages to possibly getting that solar roof, even if it is maybe a little bit of a pricey option. Um, right. So the first one's from who? Uh, the first one is from Jesse Moser. And they say, with the solar roof, I think people could find more value in the aspect of their car not dying on them mm. and the savings it would have on tow trucks. I've seen plenty of videos where the owners run out of batteries and they can't even get in the car. This would solve that issue and even get them to the nearest charging station. That's a really good point. A lot of people, even in ICE cars, run out of gas or power. And this would um, possibly... Um, get you enough energy to get you to the next charging station yeah which is a good, really good point because as we pointed out you, you are getting possibly a few miles a day in in charge from the sun and that would get you depending on where you live would right. probably get you somewhere where you could plug in right it wouldn't even necessarily have to be a charging station it could just be just be a house a wall out right a yeah. garage and then another cool comment from uh, george holly solar roof benefit could simply be to eliminate vampire drain when the car is parked for long periods as at an airport and so vampire drain if you know about electric cars you know that when you just park it out on the street or whatever mm -hmm. say at a airport um, every day the car is going to use a little bit of juice to keep its systems running right to take care of its battery management or to whatever and that's called vampire drain because you're losing power even though you're not going anywhere right and so this could eliminate that problem you park let's say at an airport out on a outdoor uh, parking lot and so you're getting some power every day from the sun to help fight that vampire drain yeah i think that that both of these are, are great suggestions and probably some good reasons why you might want to consider the solar roof even if it's not completely a you know just by the numbers um cost savings um perhaps there are some other um benefits yeah. that we haven't considered fully. and yeah and those are two of them at least all right Thank you so much for watching. Uh, right now we are on our Florida Keys road trip. Um, we're in Savannah, Georgia right now. We are headed off to Florida tomorrow. Yep. Um, we're driving the whole way. You can check it out. Go to our Facebook page. Um, if you like our Facebook page, you can see when we're going to be traveling through maybe where you, you live, um, if you live on the East Coast. Um, yeah, if you're you watching could... this on Tuesday, we're probably down in the Keys right now. So. Right. And then we'll be headed back north again, up through Florida, up through uh, Virginia, and uh, all sorts of cool states. So yeah, if you're on that route, you might want to give us a shout out. We might be able to meet up. We've already met a bunch of fans on the way down here. It's yeah. been so wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that just really gives us a boost because, I mean, we're, we're usually talking to you from our car. And it, what's wonderful is we get to read your comments, first of all. That's awesome. That's huge. And then secondly, to start now actually meeting you guys in person is fantastic. Fantastic. So we apparently have amazing fans. We really do. Um, so thank you so much for being a fan, watching the show. Um, yeah, know, this, this, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share that thing with someone else. Um, either either share it or hit the like button and that will tell YouTube to share it to, to people who might be interested. Um, and also uh, consider supporting us on Patreon. Um, you know, we want to be bringing you the best news coverage um, every single week. Um, so that would go a long way to getting us the gear, the batteries, the microphones, the, the tripods, the everything yeah. um, to bring you the best coverage and also other videos that we, that we do on this channel. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all of our viewers and all of our subscribers and especially to our Patreon subscribers. Thank you so much. All right. Now you know.